This is Channel 4 Television, and the date, the 22nd of September, 1985. On this very day, 30 years ago, Associated Rediffusion launched the commercial television network in the London area, to be followed over the next four years by ten other companies. Now we turn the clock back to those opening nights in an affectionate celebration, just for openers. and tell us how we're doing with London. The signal is coming up clearly, he says. We're getting the network on our monitors beautifully. We're on the phone with Birmingham, Master Control, and London Master Control. 15 seconds to net time. The count will begin now. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three. Take London! Mr. Chairman, Your Excellencies, my Lords, Sheriffs, Ladies and Gentlemen, I am most happy to be present tonight because the occasion marks the opening of the London station of the new television authority. Here it is, as we all believe, a means of communication which enters the homes of millions of our countrymen, which has an unrivaled power of persuasion, a matchless influence on thought and action. It's a terrifying power. For good or evil, free television, like a free press, will not be controlled by any council or committee, but by two factors. By the tele television company's own sense of responsibility, and by the fundamental good sense and right feeling of the British people. The ITA is charged with the responsibility for the balance, the quality, and for the clarity of the picture that we see. The programs will be the responsibility of individual companies. Commerce will supply the revenue. And. Uh, Advertisers will uh, supply that revenue and advertising will be limited in total amount and uh, confined to natural breaks in the program. Nor indeed will Hamlet interrupt his soliloquy uh, to tell us of the favorite brand of toothpaste ordinarily used in Elsinore. It's tingling fresh. It's fresh as ice. It's Gibbs SR Toothpaste, the tingling fresh toothpaste that does your gums good, too. The tingle you get when you brush with SR is much more than a nice taste. It's a tingle of health. It tells you something very important, that you're doing your gums good and toughening them to resist infection. See your dentist regularly and brush with SR, the tingling fresh toothpaste for teeth and gums. Gibbs SR. Independent television is, of course, a commercial venture, and I'm not ashamed of saying so. But it is, at the same time, a public service. And as such, we do recognize our responsibility in the use of what is today the most powerful modern medium. We shall use it with discretion and judgment.
just like to rehearse um, that. Thank you. Uh, originally for the station, Mr. Wolf, in the New York, but such has been the enthusiasm that on Ulster television is on the air tonight, months ahead of schedule. It gives me great pleasure to introduce to you. Good evening. It is my privilege, my uh, rare privilege, in fact, it is my unique privilege to be the first person to appear before you on Ulster Television. And it makes me extremely happy to share in your pleasure in the fact that Northern Ireland is now a member of the Independent Television Network. Tonight, Programs from the United States, from the United Kingdom, will come across the sea to bring into your homes the very best programs that television has to offer. Now, originally, this station was to have opened in the new year, but such has been the enthusiasm that it is opening here, this moment, tonight. Months, yes, some months, October the 31st, we can say it is months ahead of schedule. For this, many people are to be very heartily congratulated indeed. Now, it gives me great pleasure, first of all, to introduce to you the chairman of Ulster Television, Lord Antrim. Now, Sir Ivan, if you will press this switch over, when I say now, that will open our station. Five, four, three, two, one, now. Thank you, Paul. Here we go. Good luck, everyone. Good luck, darling. Thank you. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Cue music. I'm one. There's no reason I show. Everything about it is a pain. Things will tell you all along. Nowhere could you get that happy feeling when you are stealing that extra bomb. Yes, there's no business like show business, and our Time Tease Television introduces to you 60 Minutes, the stars and the features you're going to see regularly on your screens. And what better to start with than, yes, the one and only, your great favorite, yes, Jimmy James. Hello. you. Is it you that's putting it around that arm bar, me? Who, oh, me? Yes. Good heavens, no. Why should I do that? Well, is it him? Is it you? Huh? Is it you? I don't want any. He doesn't want any. <laughs> oh, I knew we got a load in last Friday. You must have some left. How much are they? How much are they? Uh, look, take two pair and get rid of him. <laughs> no, we'll somebody... Take two pair, wrap them up and we'll... No, somebody's putting it around the arm bar, me. Are they? Yeah. <laughs> D did you want to keep it a secret? <laughs> I think you've got a good case if you can find out who it is. I've seen him somewhere before, Dr. Werber. I never forget a face. Am I right, see? Am I see? <laughs> right, he got away quick. <laughs> oh, the little fella, he went through your legs. Oh, he's gone now. <laughs> Where have I seen you before? Oh, I'm out of there now. Um... <laughs> oh, that's where I've seen you in there. I didn't know I'd been in. I've been away, you know. He's, eh? I've been away, you know. Yes, I know, but it doesn't show. <laughs> I've been to South Africa. South Africa? Mm. You didn't go in this coat. <laughs> no, I went in an aeroplane. <laughs> I'll work in one in a minute. What were you doing in South Africa? I was the colonial secretary. Oh, did Macmillan know? Mmm. Oh, very good. And I was very popular in South Africa as well. Nice people. Mmm, and just before I came home, they gave me a lovely present. Did they? What did they give you? Two man-eating lions. Oh, yeah? Did you fetch them all? Mmm. 
Where do you keep them? You'll in have... this box. You'll have... <laughs> Two lions in there. Mm. I thought I heard a little rustling. <laughs> He said, go, go and get two coffees. Are you telling him about the lions? Uh, yes, he's got two lions in that box. How much are they? How much are they? He doesn't want to sell them. <laughs> are you telling him about the giraffe? If he, yes, he's got a giraffe in there with the lions. Is it uh, black or, or white? Oh, I don't. Uh, what what colour's the giraffe he wants to know? The coffee, are me. <laughs> <laughs> I've been to India too. Oh, he's been all over the place. India? Mm. Now, I bet the Indians gave you a nice present. They did. What did they give you? An elephant. An elephant. Mm. Male or female? No, an elephant. <laughs> I know, but you see, that there's the male... Oh, don't bother. You wouldn't know. I don't suppose it matters to you whether it's male or female, the elephant. It, it wouldn't matter to anybody, only another elephant. <laughs> I'll stop you going to those youth clubs. <laughs> Where do you keep the elephant? In the box? Oh, don't be silly. You couldn't get an elephant in there. <laughs> the elephant in the cage. If he was... Yes, that's where he keeps it, in a cage. Where do you keep the cage? In, in the, the box. box. <laughs> There'll be room in the van for the three of us, I think. Look, we, we've had a lot of requests for songs. What do you suggest we sing out of the two songs we know? Oh, Who's got me ding dong? We'll sing. What? Who's got me ding dong? How, the, how do I know who's got your ding dong? <laughs> You're a big lad now. You can look after it, can't you? You're not carrying about. <laughs> who's got me ding dong? Have you lost yours as well? Fact, no! Because you'd like to see what goes to make a show like this. What, what goes Up in the control room, room, the lighting engineer plays a kind of organ, which, instead of giving out music, controls the studio lighting. In the makeup rooms, the beautiful girls you'll be seeing in our programs are made even more beautiful. While the dress designers make sure they look like a million dollars when they come to you on your screen. The artists and designers work away to give you the thrill of being in romantic and luxurious places. The record library stores thousands of titles, pops and classics. Just now, Petula Clark is choosing some of her favorites with musical director Norman Hackford. Viewers everywhere show their impatience by having new aerials put up. What kind of programs, they quite rightly asked, are Anglia going to give us? Well, first there's the news, the local news, all about Anglia. The nerve centre at Anglia House will be receiving news of every occurrence 24 hours of the day. Head of news, Peter Kennelly, will shape it into the twice daily bulletins following the national news. Every so often there will be that hot story that will send the stills photographer scuttling for his camera and the film unit scorching off to bring back the pictures for you. There'll be news of motor racing at Snetterton. Exciting moments on the hairpin bend. Hang up for a minute pictures of the winners. The news film negative is developed on a high-speed machine and is barely dry before the editor cuts and assembles the scenes and it passes into the hands of the telecine engineers for transmission in the next bulletin. Two of my announcer colleagues, whose faces will soon be very familiar to you, are Newman Saunders and Colin Barr. Basically, it comes down to um, ten items for the sunshine, to put it anyway. Ten items? Mm -hmm. What, these seven and three just come in, I suppose? Just come in. The speed of television. Said. Now, this house fire one, very, very good film on that, just in time for tonight's bulletin, so it'll come in on second on the list, and after that, Colin, will be your interview with the minister, right? Right, sir, and how long have I got, and what line do you want me to take? Well, I suggest you have two minutes, two minutes ten, perhaps, but, wi you know, really winkle the truth out of him, dig it out of him. Right, can give us all the answers. I'll right? do my very best, right, sir. Or, when a big film is being made nearby, we'll be there, talking to the stars. In Ipswich the other day, we had Richard Attenborough making The Angry Silence. What now, darling, what now? 
I don't know. I'm lost. Let me think quickly, oh, quickly. Escape. Together? Of course. We can't. We can't. Oh, no, we can't. We must. It would break Victor's heart. Well, it would break Sybil's heart, too, probably, but that can't be helped. Think of the hell we should lead them into staying here, pretending to love them and loving each other so desperately. We must tell them. What? Call them and tell them. We can't do that. Well, it's honest. I can't be honest. It's too horrible to think of. What should we do? What should we say? We just have to rely on the inspiration of the moment. It'll be a moment completely devoid of inspiration, the most appalling moment imaginable. You must see that. Well, what do you propose to do that as it is? They may appear at any minute. We must choose instantly, one way or the other. Go away together now, or stay here with them and never see each other again, ever. Don't be silly. What choice is there? No choice at all. Come along. No, wait. This is sheer raving madness. Something's happening. Eight major plays a year will go out from Anglia on the national network. In charge of production, internationally famous George Maura Farrell, winner of many TV awards. Here, he rehearses Hollywood stars Dawn Adams and John Ireland in a scene from our second play, a thriller called Sweet Poison. An outside broadcast, or OB unit, is a little less portable, maybe, but it can go pretty nearly anywhere to bring you events at the moment they happen. Farming programs will be particularly interesting coming this way. The cameras taking you into the heart of the countryside and bringing you a breath of country air and the sounds of rural life. 2150 to headquarters. Headquarters, bye. I want plain clothesmen here at the Davis place. Eight-hour shifts. 10-4. No, no, it's faster than you yet. Don't do it. Expecting you. Time to meet um, our next storyteller, who is in fact uh, a lady, a very charming lady, Mrs. Bella Armstrong. Here she is. Thank you, Thank you. Right, that's the idea. Well, nice, wonderful to have you on the on the program, yes, Bella. You you keep a boarding house here, don't yes. you? Any of your no. any of your lodgers looking in tonight? Any? Is there one, perhaps? One lodger? No, I don't have lodgers. I have boarders. Oh, I beg your pardon. Right. <laughs> if, you'd have said, if you'd have said there was a lodger, I'd have said, hello, Roger. <laughs> All right, well, look, straight off. <laughs> it's wonderful to have you, Bella. Straight off, we'd like you to tell us your favourite joke. Well, now, uh, I had a friend. Her two sons went on a cruise. And uh, they did a lovely three months cruise in the Mediterranean. Of course, they came home, and a week after, one of her sons died. So they sent in for a woman for to lay him out and do the necessaries. <laughs> and one woman said to the other, doesn't he look well? <laughs> so her friend says, of course he looks well. Wouldn't you waft the Mediterranean cruise for three months? <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful, Bella. Great girl. Mm. That's the girl. Well, Bella, with all the, with all, the, all of those, uh, Herbaceous borders of yours. You, uh, you must have a lot of washing to do. So we yes, would like you do. My, well, we would like you to accept a nice, a nice present from Tyne Teas. There we are. There's a bar of soap to do your washing. With. That's to, <laughs> both. All right. And just in case you want something to put it in, we've got a nice washing machine for you. All right. There we are, darling. And thank you very much for coming. Well, there we are, viewers. You can see just how, just how simple it is. We'll be with... I beg your pardon. We'll be with you on, on Monday night at 9 o'clock. So we'll send you then. All right? Good night and God bless. Good night. Good night. Don't just say brown. Say bogus. Oh.
Ladies and gentlemen, on this great occasion when Wales and West have at last got their independent TV station, I've arranged for some of our own stars to come along so you can play ticket to them. Hello, sir. Hello, Jack. Hello. <laughs> well, I must say, it's very nice to invite me here this evening. And the only thing I can say, it could have happened to a nicer man. <laughs> Tommy, where were you born? Ah, well, I was born at a very early age. I cried just like a baby. <laughs> no, I was born in Caerphilly, Wales. Really? Where'd you go after that? Well, uh, when I was in Caerphilly, Wales, I left there when I was a year old because I got too serious with the girl next door. <laughs> and then I went to Exeter. Oh, yes. Ex Devon. Devon. Oh, I'd be Devon too, boy. I'd well, be Gwaylen. Where'd be Gwaylen? Come here. Don't be amazed. <laughs> He's proper, isn't he? <laughs> By the way, when did you first start magic? Well, I started there when I was about eight years old. My auntie in Exeter gave me my first set. Your auntie? Would you yes. like to talk to her now? Can I do that? Do, please. All right. Well, look, auntie, if you're watching, thank you very much for that magic set, but I still can't do the tricks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, tell me, you've gone a long way since then. What are you doing now? What? I'm in pantomime. Really? Yes. Oh. If you ever come to London, I should be at the Playdom with Arthur Askey, you know, the big fella. <laughs> How did you get in here? How did you get in? Well, nice to see you. But you don't live in Manchester. Yeah, I've got a nice clock on like me. Look, I'll change. <laughs> I know you. Oh, it's over there. Oh, I've got two cameras, eh? <laughs> You've been spending your money. Hello, there's another one over here. Now, keep them still, boys. Where are you? Hiya, Dad. I've got my dad in Southport and my sister. You know I'm from around here, don't you? Not from Manchester, I know that. Oh, no, Hubble from Liverpool. Liverpool? Yes, come oh, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, all the comics come from Liverpool, Quentin. I know that, I know that. To live in Liverpool, you've got to be a comic, you know that, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Never mind, Manchester man, Liverpool gentleman. From now on... That's right, I'll throw in the brick bat. <laughs> Not a chance. Well, now, you haven't got a cup final figure, have you, by any chance? No, but we have a piano. That's what I've come at. A piano? Piano, yeah. Would you like me to display my art? Yes. Oh, don't be selfie. Where are you? Carl, just anything you want here. Yes. Yeah. I will tell you, where are you? Come out of the way. What's the matter? Who is that? The begging name. I, uh, I didn't expect this at all, Playmates. This has been rather thrust on me. But they've, uh, they've got this out for an hour, this piano. They've hired it, you know. <laughs> And if, uh, if Mr. Bernstein's uh, plans go right up here, they're going to buy it. See? <laughs> we won't be long, so they, they keep the cows in here at night, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, well, well. Brought me music, look. I'll tell you why I brought this, just by chance. Just by chance. Because um, I've been doing a lot of slap doodling in London in, uh, in, uh, before your very eyes. Of course, you've missed it up here, but they filmed it, you see. And I hope that in a, a few weeks' time, you'll be seeing me at my old nonsense again. You see? I haven't had time to make up properly, look. Can you see my beard? Only Max Factor Cream Puff brings you instant beauty, constant skin care. Hallelujah. We are now drawing to the end of what is a very thrilling day for us. We are greatly honoured tonight. We have... Lord Bishop of Durham to deliver the epilogue. Let us say a prayer for all who are going to give their services in this television. We beseech the Almighty God to direct and bless those who in this our generation and in this place speak where many listen and write what many read all artists and craftsmen, that they may do their part in making the heart of the, of the people wise, its mind sound, and its will righteous, to the honor of Jesus Christ our Lord.
time brings us to the close of our first day's transmission on Channel 8. We hope you've enjoyed the programmes. Good night, everyone. <laughs>